this openness to share to the right people. I, I guess I, I very much believe in education done the right way. And I've always felt like Guy really had a good handle on how to do this. You know what I mean? So he, he's really given us a lot here, guys. Yeah. Well, that, was, that was one of the big challenges. And that was actually how I got past these objections in the beginning was, hmm. okay, what is the right way to do this? Now, starting out at a, teaching a seminar at a convention, that's easy. All of the people who are allowed to purchase seminar tickets are convention attendees who are uh, who have artist passes. Uh, no one gets an artist pass from Tattoo Tour if they're not a vetted professional artist, right? So right. conventions are already doing, you know, the, the old in the old days. They don't do it anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I want a boot, you know? Evergreen does. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Back in the old days, people were strongly vetted and everyone had to have their bloodborne pathogens, everything else, right? And so uh, by the time someone actually was in an opportunity to buy a seminar ticket, uh, it's pretty clear that they are either a professional tattooist or, or an apprentice in a shop uh, owned by professionals or they just simply wouldn't be there, you know? Right, right. And so with that being kind of the environment, it made it a lot easier to offer education. So then outside of that, um, Gabe and I ended up, you know, across the years, uh, experimenting with a lot of different, different ways of trying to vet artists and just make sure that someone is actually a professional before they uh, can, you know, just watch any seminar they want. And right. this is this is a tricky thing too, it's manpower. And, you know, especially I had to let my staff go uh, because of COVID. I used to have somebody that could like make the phone calls and that kind of thing. Um, and so, you know, we still look over uh, names and often it's it's a real easy thing. You just look at their uh, Instagram profile. And it's like, oh yeah, there's there's the shop they work at. There's their work, you know. Right. This is a tattoo artist, right? Nine times out of 10, you know, you, they're very easy to confirm that way. So, you know, it's it's obviously the the bar is different uh than it used to be you know everything had to be much much tighter back then but back back then we didn't have youtube right yeah. now anything that i don't teach you you can go learn from youtube and maybe not as right. well so uh it really would be better uh, you know i think that it's kind of an accepted thing these days that by the time someone is actively paying their money for education when you could get this stuff for free on YouTube is serious and probably is not going to misuse that information. Absolutely. That's a great way to look at it. Yeah. So good. Well, first of all, uh, guy, I just love your heart. Um, the responsibility that you chose to take on so early on in your career and have kept integrity to that all along and, you know I don't know if you ever hear the term especially in business where they say hey under promise and over deliver right but well, something we operate by and what I'm hearing in your language is to not under promise and over deliver but you actually are over you know you over promise and then over deliver on top of that I can only imagine anyone that's bought a ticket to come to your seminars already stoked that they got a ticket to your show but your heart to not only serve them from your table at the highest level and potential that you can, but the, that you've thought of what else can I give them? How else can I bless them? What can I leave them with above and beyond on top of how you're serving them um, with all of your blood, sweat, and tears and what it even took you to even obtain that knowledge to now pour it into someone else. So I just want to acknowledge you for that and thank you for your heart in that area. Right on. I appreciate that. Uh, okay, so why give it away? Right? I mean, obviously, you know, you can get paid for teaching seminars a certain amount, but trust me, it's not like the way you get paid for doing tattoos, right? Right. <laughs> uh, it's it's something you only do if you really want the experience. And um, I learned very quickly from my first few seminars, uh, and and the first bunch of them were all through Dennis Dwyer's conventions because it was an environment where I felt like I could stumble a little bit if I needed to. Mm. But uh, I immediately discovered what uh, a steep learning experience it was to teach mm -hmm. because you're trying to speak in concrete terms mm. about you know, your subject. You need to be able to narrow it down to very black and white terms. Mm. And a lot of the time, 
you don't really know your subject in those terms. Mm -hmm. You just get by and you find yourself talking about it and you're like, and the truth of the matter is, uh, um, um, maybe I don't know. Yeah, right. <laughs> I found myself in that situation in the middle of seminars. Yeah, um, multiple times, and I would chuckle and I'd say, "Well, let's let's hear some opinions on this, and then we'll go around the room with it." And and uh, you know, it's it doesn't help anybody to put on this this mantle of of all knowingness. Thank you. Um, and honestly, most people aren't fooled anyway. That's so. right. <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, better just admit when you don't know, and uh, it, that's very empowering for others who are like, "Man, I've always struggled with that one too." Mm. And then you can get the conversation going. Well, why have you struggled with it? And before you know it, even if there's not a concrete answer, people are feeling better about it. And they're feeling more uh, empowered to address those things. Yes, humility Man. is the ideal state. Man. Yeah. That's beautiful. And like you said, that empowered everyone in it, the room. Totally. And, you know, like, um, I'm giddy right now. I could be a fly on a wall all night and just, like, listen to you guys cut it up. And just speaking from experience, um, and, you know, I've shared this a lot, but I like to see um, people I admire and look up to um, that I put on the pedestal um, show show their cards and be transparent, not know everything. You know, you've done tattoos. I imagine that haven't healed the greatest from time to time. Just it, things like that give me, um, hope for myself because I'm my worst critic. And it just seems like you and Josh and every, everybody I look up to in the industry just shits like fucking rainbows and does badass shit all the time. So to experience either, you know, going to a, you know, I just paid money for a guy action seminar and then I can appreciate your transparency and honesty and humility and being like, Hey, let's uh, bring you guys in on this and, and take some opinions. That's, that is like way more authentic than the persona you were talking about trying to pretend like you got it together. Cause you know, the, the Pete real recognize real and I can tell if somebody's bullshitting and ultimately that's not going to serve me at the end of the day because now a rumor started. So I'm going to go back with some bullshit knowledge and you know, whoever I'm going to tell that to and let that roll into a big pile of poop that it's supposed to roll into versus like just being like, Hey man, I don't, I don't know. Which is why I appreciate early on. He said, I don't need to be burdened by that or my reputation to be burdened, right. you know, um, which is just beautiful. And when you keep it 100, you don't have to worry about what you said or did, Man, <laughs> you know, the, the truth <laughs> needs no defense. Yeah. 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 yeah it, the, the less you have to backtrack and ask yourself, okay, who did I bullshit? Who do I have a problem <laughs> with? Let <laughs> I me mean, I mean, right. figure this out before I speak. Man. Right. 